What's up everyone? It's your girl Karina, aka I of Karina, and I am here to finish what I started, which is to talk about this Lilith in Pisces transit. So whenever Lilith goes through a sign, it actually is there for a little bit over a year. So Lilith has entered into Pisces uh, in the beginning of May of 2019 and will continue to transit until 2020. I don't have the exact date for you. I haven't looked it up. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but I do, and I actually, I will comment, leave a comment below and write down the dates once I look it up after this. But it is going to be a long, fairly long transit, right? It's not going to be gone in 30 days. It's going to be something that's kind of here with us for a bit of some time and going into one of the biggest years that our generation has ever faced, which is 2020. So, wow. What does this Lilith transit mean for everyone? So, um, just to break down how I'm going to uh, channel this for you, um, I've done a lot of research, but I also have my own insight that I want to bring to the table. And I've said this in a video before, but I want to share again in this video because this will be going to my YouTube, that you have four Liliths and um, they can all be placed in different parts because um, each Lilith is a different form, like physical form or non-physical. And my interpretations actually speak to all Liliths, uh, but I would say that this specific one is special is more leaning towards your black moon placement but it could be seen for all of your little placements okay the other thing is that um lilith and like these these pieces in the sky right either asteroids like chiron and um uh, points in the sky sometimes they are even better interpreted by the house position that they're in. And so what I want to do in this talk is go through if Lilith is conjunct or will conjunct one of your planets and then talk about Lilith in the houses. And I will also speak about Lilith and Pisces. So you'll get Lilith and Pisces, Lilith conjunct the planets, and then Lilith through the houses. So we're going to... Um, really take it there and what I will do is make sure that there's timestamps so that if you just want to jump to your own position you can do that after this video is done and it's on my YouTube channel but I would recommend to at least stay for this beginning part which is Lilith and Pisces in general so you understand that placement on its own okay so let's begin let's start this off I've got my coffee to help me and I've got my tentacles out, ready to go. Um, everything that I have to share is not going to be set in stone. My own uh, personal image could change after going through this transit, but I do feel that what I have here is preparation for you to manifest your best ability because Lilith can be very dark energy. Actually, Lilith is dark goddess energy. And the thing that is often confused in a lot of interpretations, and this is all that I'm giving with my interpretation, that's why I call it Eye of Karina, because it's my interpretation, is that goddess energy is here to stay, and like goddess energy is going to be the thing that is taking over. But especially from my more Libra balance point of view, the biggest disclaimer that I have for you is that Feminine and masculine divine energy must work together in balance. And that's what we really need more than anything else. So what Lilith shows is actually the uh, the overthrow the, of an uh, imbalanced feminine nature, which is to go purely uh, feminine and actually have no light, no masculinity in it at all. And it becomes chaotic and eruptive okay and let's also bring in the disclaimer of good and bad because I don't necessarily go for that but what we do want in this life I believe most of us want but I won't speak for everyone what I want in this life is to be able to manifest my goals and my visions and what 
I want out of life. But those goals and visions are focused energy. It's not chaotic energy. And so if you want to tap into your most chaotic energy, then diving into Lilith will be one of the things that you love. But if you want to channel Lilith and bring it in with everything else, then it will not be pure chaos. You will have to learn how to control your Lilith dark goddess energy. And please understand that pure chaos absolutely does not understand good and bad. It just understands what is and operates off of that. So you have to really understand that when we're dealing with dark goddess energy, you are tapping into something that is extremely powerful and goes far beyond our little human bodies and lives. It is something that um, we as humans are a vessel that we can channel, but we have to understand the magic and the power in it. Otherwise, you can actually turn it on to yourself and create a life that you never envisioned, all because of a deep reaction that you wanted to experience and a chaotic rebelliousness that you wanted to experience but you didn't understand the consequences of that. And in this human vessel, in this life on earth, we have to, we don't have to abide by consequence, but consequence is there for us, right? So in Lilith, there is no consequence. Hi, cat. But in, in, on earth, and when we deal with like planets like Saturn and whatnot, we have consequences, right? So sad, things like Saturn and Earth energy, that focuses you, that concentrates you. And things like water energy, that is, um, is more chaotic. And you need both. You need chaos, you need that freedom, and then you also need a stability. So, guys, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get into like a full preacher mode about this, but it's important for me to share with you my perspective on the matter um because that's what i own as as me and i don't want to use magic to manipulate you i want to use magic as a tool that you can access you know and that's my overall my own lilith work that i need to work on right okay <laughs> so lilith and pisces now, I do have a video on my YouTube channel where I talk about natal Lilith and Pisces and some of the things will be repeated, but the transit is so much different because it speaks to everyone, right? When you're natal Lilith and Pisces, that means a lot, but when it's transiting, everyone is going to go through this. Everyone has Pisces somewhere in their chart, so everyone is going to tap into this energy, so... What is dark goddess Pisces energy? Well, Pisces and Scorpio are two of the deepest, darkest energies, right? That relate automatically to, to the darkness. Now, Pisces is on a um, level like no other because Pisces is the letting go of the human body and being spirit, right? And so the first thing that I want to mention about Lilith and Pisces is that there is a consciousness that is kind of hovering over us. Some of my favorite astrologers call it the collective consciousness, right? And that consciousness is in Lilith and Pisces is dark consciousness. It does not operate off of good or bad. It just operates off of what is right um, which is the the inclusion of all good and bad now Lilith and Pisces taps into this consciousness so natal Lilith and Pisces are sometimes they are completely manipulated by that dark consciousness but transiting you too can tap into it it is so accessible to you now now do you want to tap into the consciousness and when do you want to tap into the consciousness is the key, okay? Because this consciousness is, um, again, operating out of a place that uh, does not understand good or bad, okay? So if you think about murky waters, like waters that have no sunlight, there is absolutely nothing there but life in those murky waters, all kinds of different kinds of life, 
right? And then when the sun hits the water, that's when it becomes um, purified in a way in which uh, life is there, but it's almost drinkable water, right? So understanding that Lothan Pisces is water without sunlight. It's that subconsciousness without ego, without anything but lots of different kinds of lies. <laughs> And so what this is, is that if you are able, if you want to tap into this consciousness, you have to understand that you might be letting go of purity and might be diving into an acceptance of being tainted. Okay, so because everything exists there, everything exists there. And Lilith and Pisces is impressionable and operates under the okay to do whatever it wants under that consciousness, right? Now, my natal Lothan Pisces, they struggle with this, maybe have found themselves in situations that they didn't want to, but because of the masses or because of the group that they're part of, the community that they're a part of, they were already, you know, uh, manipulated by the consciousness to operate and take actions of which their ego, of which their lighter soul side would not want right so we have to understand ego also versus um and a lot of times ego is used as something that is not good like you don't want to be of your ego but the ego is there as a process of your light but it can have its own like heaviness that's why when people are extremely vain or extremely arrogant they're heavy in light right that's why you can actually have too much light and that go completely off but you can actually have too much darkness and that go completely off right so Lilith and Pisces is no light and the chaoticness that happens under that and tapping into that chaos through a community through a consciousness through like a massive agreeing of that this is what we are all going to do and then you also become impressionable under it so you could actually lose your individuality and become all right the all is everything idea and if the all is everything idea is going with you know taking revenge out on the on a certain thing then all becomes a part of that and you too can fall into that so you have to be aware of your impressionability right or impression yeah i think that's the word i don't know what the word is you have to be aware of uh of how much you can be manipulated by the masses by the subconscious by the big um you know the big brain that is happening during Lilith and Pisces. And you'll see it. Depending on where it is in your chart, the big the big brain may manifest in different ways, right? So like the first house, it might manifest as like the body. Like there is a, a typical kind of body that we want to fantasize or be an illusion about. And so I'm tapping into the big brain of what is a what is the fantasy body, right? You can also go into the sixth house and you can tap into the big brain of what is like proper work or you know what is my my dream or you know my dream work and um be uh tied into the illusion that that is the only way in which I must carry out my my work it's the only way that I belong so it can work for you but it can also not that's the thing it's not about what's right or wrong it's about having the choice and the tools to do so let's get into more typical Lilith and Pisces understandings I've already mentioned it illusions fantasies okay but let's take it to a deeper level especially with what's happening right now like with Game of Thrones Game of Thrones is a story that has so many levels it is a fantasy story completely made up made up and the levels of the character development of the plot of the prequels that are coming out of the you know everything that is happening in this story it is becoming real right even though it is a fantasy story and this is Lilith and Pisces it is dealing with a fantasy that is where they where you live in versus reality and the two almost merging together because Pisces is all is everything so fantasy and reality merge together 
until you might actually deal with a situation that forces you to see that your fantasy is actually completely disillusioned and you have to deal with that in its own sense, okay? So, for instance, the um, way in which that can manifest is, well, let's look at, like, relationships and sexuality and the way that we operate, you know, when having sex. And everybody has their different needs and whatnot. And when we have Loth and Pisces, we might be more prone to wanting to do role-playing and to try out different things that you know, are about becoming somebody different or becoming something exalted, like something that is like a figure or a symbol of sex and and whatever excites you when it comes to that. You know, so for some people it could be like, you know, um, um, cosplay where it's like your favorite uh, character or it could be, um, you know, like just a symbol of a situation. So like, let's say if you love... Like, um, if you have a fantasy about teachers, then maybe it's like, uh, dressing up as like, you know, an atypical symbolic image of a teacher, right? And this can play in all roles, but the whole idea of it is that you are bringing the fantasy into reality, into the bedroom. And Lilith is all about that sexual, deep parts of us that want to experience these things and so with Lilith and, Lilith and Pisces you might have more of the freedom to do so because you have probably dealt with maybe some rejection of it to some degree it, um, and this is also the thing about it is that Lilith energy is about dealing with where we feel rejected right where we feel like an outcast so maybe the fantasies that you have had don't go along with what is reality or normal and you have wanted to act it out and play it out but are unable to do so and so when Lilith and Pisces now that it's here you might feel the the need to to do it right so you might be done with the two extremes you might feel more rejection about your fantasies because they're not happening whether that's in the bedroom or in some area of your life, or you might be ready to take it far and indulge and expand those fantasies. So, woo, it's a hot car. Um, I'm by the window in Brooklyn, by the way. Okay, um, so what's really important to understand in this interpretation of Lilith and Pisces is that there is no one way but we need, Lilith alone is a void, a feeling of not getting or being accepted, a feeling of being an outcast. Pisces is the fantasy, the role playing. And when we merge the two together, you can either be the extreme of feeling like an outcast because of the role playing, or you could be ready to take it out on a very ex ex exponential level. Um, because Pisces classical ruler is Jupiter and Jupiter is abundant in expansion. So it becomes even more bigger, your need to experience this fantasy. Okay, so this is where it can actually be fun. But what could happen, let's say, if you're now you're dealing with chaotic energy, right? So what can happen if the illusion and the reality continue to mix in your life? Let's say in the, in the bedroom, right, in your sexual experiences or in regular, you know, working with this person or working with that person. Let's say you want to take out role playing in the bedroom and you want to have, you know, you know, I, I don't know why the teacher is coming to me, but Pisces is sometimes teacher, you know, it's a teacher energy. Um, you know, you want to role play with your teacher or the symbol of a teacher, but now it's, you're so engulfed in the fantasy and you've indulged in it on a sexual level. And that was so hot, right? But now that sexuality has risen up through your body, into your head, into the entire space of your aura. And now when you were out and about, you might not be able to contain your own, um, fantasy, and let's say if you're a parent at like a parent teacher conference, you might be sitting there fantasizing about your child's teacher, for instance. This is just a 
example, okay? But it's an example of how reality and fantasy cross. And in Lilith and Pisces, that is somehow able to be uh, manifested. So we want to be able to understand how this energy is very powerful and it's very subtle. It's not something that's like, bam, unless you hit a certain planet degrees, which I'm about to get into. The other thing with Pisces energy, right, and Lilith energy is the need to be um, escaping whatever you're dealing with in reality. And so escapism with Pisces naturally comes with alcoholism and drug use and taking it too far as well. So we, you could definitely be prone to be um, wanting to access your fantasy through a, you know, through a drunken state, right? So you could find yourself in abundance um, situations where you are inebriated just naturally. And um, the other thing with Pisces is the ideas of, um, you know, like once you're inebriated or once you're too far gone with whatever drug use of choice, then you have to go to the hospital. And Pisces also rules that, the hospital, being in an isolated place where you are being healed or repaired, right, dealing with restoration. So these are also things that can come up when taken too far, when the chaotic energy is taken too far. This also can lead to mental illness, mental instability. It actually doesn't lead to it, but it's another aspect of it. Mental illness, um, depression, schizophrenia, um, double personalities, things like that. These are all things that come up when we deal with the hospital themes, right? So now we are looking at all of those being possibilities and the chaotic energy of Lilith and Pisces. And what are those things? What are the manifestations of those things? Usually, usually, I'm not going to say always, but usually through the inability to recognize reality from fantasy. And so you are, and sometimes it's also like spiritual bodies. So like, like with certain mental illnesses, it might be like your physical body versus your spiritual body, right? Versus the, the higher self. Like there's so many, there's so many versions of you outside the physical body, body. So when you are in a mental illness situation that's very extreme, sometimes that is because you cannot recognize your physicality versus all of the other yous that exist outside of you, right? So all of the spiritual realm and fantasy realm and physical realm are chaotic in nature. And so everything is falling down on you, right? Same thing with um, addiction and escapism through addiction of alcohol and drug use. And it's not to say that's not okay to, you know, have a drink or two or puff puff if you need to, you know, I'm not judging you, but the, um, the over use of it is where we get the need to escape and the overabundance of that fantasy of escaping that leaving the body, leaving the reality. Right. And so now we are merging that fantasy reality, you know, spectrum basically. So on top of all of that, on top of all of that, there's a reason why I wanted to list all of those themes out. It's because the Lilith and Pisces energy can romanticize all of those things. And so what we can also see on a collective level, right? Because in the beginning, I talked about a, a sub, a full consciousness of everyone kind of agreeing to it, depending on what community it is, is that we romanticize being addicted. We romanticize over abusive drugs. We romanticize alcoholism. We romanticize um, mental illness. We romanticize being in hospitals and being isolated and being alone and not being connected to our bodies and being outside of ourselves, you know, being of your higher self versus being in yourself, period. So there's this thing you know, I'm a Taurus. I have a Karina. I got to tell you, I'm a Taurus. And as a Taurus, I'm constantly being called back to my body. So when we deal with certain, you know, ideas that want to take us completely out of the body, right? That's like not wanting to live anymore in the human self. And there is an aspect of that in which you are rejecting your own reality, which happens a lot with Lilith and Pisces. 
<coughs> so again it's not judgment of good or bad but it is the chaotic energy that can manifest okay so we've dealt with that romanticizing of it all in which it's like it's okay and it's like it's kind of beautiful and there's something great about it and there's actually great there are higher levels of output that can be used for these things right these higher levels that i'm speaking of is creativity so um if you participate in it only right then maybe you might be dealing with more of the consequences saturnian saturn on that on that ish but let's say if you dealt with it or experienced it and then you want to channel it emotionally through art piece dancing um, poetry writing singing music rapping right just creating now we are experiencing the exalted level of a person who is going through Lilith and Pisces so this is the era during this time in which people can create on a level that is magic and really be able to heal themselves and heal others through that by channeling their experiences of what they have gone through and now outputting it into the world right that also brings them back into the body right dancing um, finding words that speak you know because words are in the mind, but it, they're, they are describing what is happening here, right? So finding the lyrics, finding the songs, finding the painting, right? So getting back into painting, using your arms and your hands. So merging the Im imagination with the physical body, body is, is what I would say is the exalted version of how this could really play out and work really well for you. Okay, so now with all of that, whew, I talk myself silly. I'm a moon in Gemini as well. Um, let's get into the planets, okay? So let's start with sun. If you are sun in Pisces and Lilith is now coming to your sun during this transit, you are going to be acting out, acting out a lot of these energies um, and it's not that you're going to be, but you are prone to do it. You're prone to do it. And you're also prone to, like the Venus um, level, romanticize what you're doing. Um, give reason, give enough spiritual reason to what you're doing is, is okay and justified. Um, you will be the example of Lilith. Because um, it will be in, in situations where you feel outcast. You might be in more situations where you are being outcasted. And, and through that energy of Lilith coming onto the sun, you want to express how you react to not feeling like you belong, right? You can also be way more impressionable and tap into the community energy and fall into a fantasy world like you have never known. But how do you get yourself out of it, right? Until you like deal with some sort of real, real situation and you find yourself like, you know, drunk on the street somewhere or in somebody's bedroom that you don't want to be in or something like that, you know? So that is definitely... Um, the expression, right? The output, the light coming to show you how your own reactions are compelling you towards these tendencies. Now, the moon is where we could really find um, a moon in Pisces. You could really find the reaction is intense and almost mentally in unstable. And so these are the things that you really want to focus on is your own mental health with the moon in Pisces, because the moon is connected to Lilith, right? Especially when we talk about black moon Lilith, it becomes a void. So with, um, with the black moon Lilith um, energy, this is now all the Liliths, there's four Liliths, right? They all are going to be in Pisces, but um, they may all hit Pisces at different times right so when black moon Lilith is um completely 
in the zone of Pisces because it's not an object, it's a point in the sky, right? So once that void is there, the moon in Pisces experiences a void, right? A lack of something, usually uh, acceptance, right? Or maybe a lack of like true sexual, um, you know, liberation, you know, because Lilith is about sexually liberating yourself and um, the need to want to explore that even in your most secret state is compelling you in your internal world. It's not as easily seen as the sun in Pisces, where the sun in Pisces, it might be visible. Like people might see you act out in ways that are, you know, not so um, focused or concentrated. But the moon, it's all internal, right? Until maybe it's labeled as a mental instability. Um, the, the Pisces rising is similar to the sun, to be honest. But the thing is that with the Pisces rising, it might be even more just in the personality. So it's like you are becoming Lilith herself. Like, you know, like you are like me, like wearing like all black right now, you know, I'm wearing like dark makeup and like being more rebellious just for rebellious sake and, um, being more like this symbol, like the, the, the air, the ascendant is, is like the symbol of exalting up all of the Piscean themes that I said are romanticized. And so it becomes like who you present yourself when you go out there. And so it's in the personality, it's in the physical body. It's, you might be more in the need to like wear certain clothes that show off a certain theme, symbol, symbolic nature, or a role that you want to play, right? In the arising energy and, um, your face, like your face, you might want to do more things to your face. Could be a time where you want to tattoo your face. It could be a time where you, um, want to do piercings. It could be a time where you, you know, show something about your face that is kind of like, like hiding it in a way or expanding on the darker natures that you could do with whatever, you know, material things you can do in this life to make it look that way or express yourself that way. Right. So the sun is like a soul expression. It's like showing it from here. Like it, it's, it's not as much of the personality, but it's that thing that pierces through the personality. It's like the pure, um, intentional, uh, action, the intention of the action, the direction of the action where the ascendant is just exactly what you see. And so that's how it, it's different. And just to help explain the difference in those two. Um, now with Mercury here, this would be a really great place to do writing, um, to show off your thinking on what are the themes of Pisces. So it could be a time where you, you know, write out poems, short or long form uh, stories. Um, definitely, like if you was like to write your own version of Game of Thrones, this could be one of those ways to do it with a Mercury in Pisces, like writing out your story. Um, <clears throat> Mercury is also the media and the medium. So the Mercury energy in Pisces could also give you a chance to market yourself like <clears throat> through the Lilith energy, right? So it's like the Ascendant, but you are intentionally using it as like maybe a branding tactic. Um, uh, the other thing is that you could just use like social media communications to share a more darker side of you to share the healing part of you or to share the trauma that you have gone through. That could also be one way to do it with Mercury. With Venus, this is where we get into more of our romanticizing. I really feel like Venus in Pisces is going to be prone to romanticizing everything. Um, Venus wants to indulge <clears throat> and um, can very much so go too far, right? Because it's Venus and Jupiter. 
and Venus and Neptune. So you can be disillusioned and um, go too far, too over excessive with um, enjoying, you know, very, very sweet foods um, and desserts and um, a lot of, uh, you know, drinking and, you know, like not heavy drinking like it might be more like you know the sweet drinks but you're just having one too many of those and having them all the time uh, it could be you know experimenting with different drugs that can definitely be venus energy because um venus in venus and neptune manifest as the indulgence you know and jupiter uh but venus and neptune can also be the um putting like love so high on a pedestal that you see your partner as like this you know highly exalted person and you are unable to see them for reality or you might want to escape your partner and want to have a extra extra affair on the side third party you know situations um because of the need of feeling rejected from love um maybe if you're in a partnership if you're not in a partnership then maybe you're just having a lot of you know new love romantic affairs happening so this, this can definitely be a clandestine situation with Lilith hitting your Venus but there's also this part of Lilith and Venus where you are fighting with being Eve versus being Lilith right so maybe being purely feminine versus being darkly feminine and if you're stuck in between the two you might reject your purity and just take on like the scandalous side <laughs> you might want to be the other girl right um but let's say you also choose to reject Lilith then especially with this little transit the Lilith energy might come with more fuller force which means that see with Lilith there are different levels and when you're at the victim level which is actually the second level you can be a victim of getting cheated on right you could be a, like if you reject Lilith then you're like more like you want to be purely Venus and, and love and romantic partnerships you might be the one that gets cheated on you might be the one that um experiences a lot of illusions and love um lies and 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 all of that kind of um deception and love um because you're not operating in loath you're not tying tagging yourself into it it would be my advice to operate in the middle to be gray you know to exalt love as it as it wants to be but to also understand that there are darker needs to every individual you know um to operate from this place that you understand that even you have your own darker needs and fantasies and if you accept your own self like you accept your own dark needs and fantasies then you can play the gray area with with more fun honestly because you want to have fun this is this isn't these are venus is about fun you know lilith is is about hurt and pain right and it comes from that place it really does it's triggered by that place um because it's 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 all about the the loss of light right and so darkness can have a lot of pain and that's where it can come up your darkness can come up you can be very powerful with darkness and with venus here you can recognize your own power to seduce you can recognize your own power to be attractive and it can either scare you or you can merge the two of purity and taintedness and be able to utilize it and channel it in a way that is useful and beneficial to you okay also with Venus, you could be also the symbol that a lot of people want to kind of like, you know, uh, adore. You could become that, you know, that exalted figure, um, that role that people like you're the one who's playing that role and people see you as that role. And now they want to have sex with you. They want to seduce you. They want you. So Venus is all about the attraction. So what does it take? Right. And with that Loth and Pisces energy, that's what it would take. Like you're dressing yourself in a way in which people want to, 
get in your pants basically <laughs> okay now with mars it's actually mars is the output of our energy right it is the true action taken and um the aggression that we also have right so lilith is expresses herself a lot with mars energy and that's also why lilith can be very tumultuous because feminine energy um is not the moon and mars are not always you know best friends you know if you are emotional and then you're aggressive it can lead to some very um, um, things that you would regret doing. Um, so with Mars being tied to Lilith and Pisces, this could be, you know, energy in which you, you know, find yourself in um, a physical altercation that you don't really want to be in, you know. And this is physical on a violent side or physical on a sexual side. Because Lilith, remember, Lilith and Pisces is impressionable, and Mars is pure sexual aggressive energy. So you could find yourself in a situation that you were kind of manipulated to be in, or you signed up to be in it because you wanted to be a part of the consciousness of those around you. And um, one of the best ways to out output Lilith and Pisces and Mars is through physical dancing and, and um, because it's not a I mean, it is a workout dancing is definitely a workout right but if it was pure workout then that would be more Aries right but the Mars wants to sweat and the Lilith wants to move the pain out right it wants to move it through the body or just get lost in the mind so with Lilith and Mars by actually like taking dance classes or just dancing around your house that could be one way to move the energy out of the body otherwise you can become on the second level which is victimhood right um the lowest level is like pure physical violence you know abuse so we definitely don't want that let's just completely uh, we bypass that lower level and let's bypass the victim level as well and let's get to the part where you are truly influencing other people and Mars and Lilith in Pisces, you could influence, like you could aggressively influence people who are aggressive. Like, let's say you go to prisons and, and figure out how to improve the reformation of, you know, you know, murderers. I mean, it could be something like that. That would be like more of a higher exalted energy of Lilith and Pisces combining with your Mars. Now, um, Lilith in Pisces combined with Jupiter could be over over optimistic um and and huge delusions you just completely are the victim of a lot of deception and delusion or the victim of over optimism and romanticizing about it or it could actually be the opposite it could be so much depression like you are consumed by pessimism as well so the biggest thing about the Jup Jupiterian energy is um, the teaching energy to go out and share your knowledge and your wisdom. And there's a thing with Lilith and Pisces of being the all wise one and um, a know-it-all as well that can happen here. And how to offset that is, I feel, to still share your wisdom but to own it as your own wisdom, you know, to not say or speak for everyone else and to just own it as your path, your journey. And this is sharing yourself. Now, Lilith in Pisces and Saturn to me is going to be the most um, one that has to face reality and the consequences of reality. So it could be all of the things that I have explained about Lilith and Pisces and where what directions you can take it. But then Saturnian energy, what it brings to it is the consequence of just taking it too far. So that really is the over drinking and needing to pump out alcohol out of your stomach kind of situation, especially if it's in a certain house like the sixth house. And um, you can also deal with, um, you can also still here deal with an authoritative figure that is uh, manipulating you or you could be the authoritative figure that is manipulating somebody else that similar to Mars but not the same thing 
Mars could be more aggressive and violent, where Saturn, it could, I mean, it could also be aggressive and violent, to be honest. But Saturn, it could just feel more like a dictator <coughs> who is making you succumb to drugs and alcohol, <laughs> you know, or to uh, sexual acts that you do not want to abide by. One way to highly exalt the Saturnian energy with Lilith and Pisces, I would say, is to finish up what you started because Saturn is about consistency and discipline and Pisces is about tying loose ends, right? Finishing up. So let's say you started something that was like really like you started like a, a gossip trend or whatever to maybe tie it up and finish it by saying like, you know, it wasn't true. You know, it was me. I take the responsibility. I take the repercussions of what it is. It could be something like that. <clears throat> or like if you're, or it could be something a little bit lighter. Like if you are an artist and you poured out your soul onto, you know, a canvas that you actually just finish up the process of getting it complete, finishing the art and putting it out there. So like doing something, starting something and finishing it, tying up loose ends. And a lot of this energy may not ever feel finished or might want you to change and manipulate it some more. And that could also be it. So maybe it's something that you've done and you need to take it to another level as well. Okay, I'm not going to go into the other planets because... Now we're talking generationally and what I will say though, what I will say is this Lilith and Pisces guys is going to hit Neptune. It's going to be in a conjunction of Neptune. And um, I believe that the one that I was looking at was true Lilith. So I'll have to double check that for the dates that I'm going to give you, which is September 2019, October and November 2019 is when it's in a tight conjunction with Neptune. And this is where we may not be able to truly make a choice because it might be something that is uh, about our generation. And when I say our generation, I mean everyone who's alive at this moment. And being tied to the ability to see the role that we play as a unit at this time. So in any area of your life or any you know, theme of Lilith and Pisces, there might be something that is highly spiritual, spiritually connected to it, you know. But this could also be a time where we are even more compelled by our ancestors it could be a time where we recognize ancestral ties that we don't want to have and the ones that we want to harbor and continue to develop relationships with, right? So it could be chaotic in both extremes. But I would just say to keep an eye and be extremely self-aware of your illusions and delusions, especially from September to November 2019. Okay, so the last part of this talk, whew, the last part of this talk is going to be through the houses and we're actually going to keep this simple. Okay, because everything that has been mentioned can like be applied on layers to the houses and that's how I teach astrology. You just layer it and layer it and layer it. It's really just like a cake. Okay, and the house is actually to me the foundation of the cake. And the house is also where you can be provoked, where you can be triggered, okay? So it, the people in that house could represent, you know, the ones that are prone to making you feel like you need to escape, liberate yourself sexually, or feel like an outcast, you know, on all of the above that I've already mentioned. It could be the area of life where you want to indulge in all that I have mentioned, <laughs> okay? So I've already mentioned the first house, but I'll go through it again. Lilith and Pisces in the first house could actually operate with wanting to escape your actual physical body, wanting to um, 
be different and showcase yourself as a symbol versus what people normally know you as or like what the reality of how you look like as and create yourself in a completely different way. So this could be uh, one of the other things that I haven't mentioned, but it could be the manipulation of your body, right? So actually getting physical plastic surgery, even it could be, it could be disappearing and just creating like an image or an avatar of yourself as well with that, um, with that first house energy. It also could be something with the feet, like because um, the feet is a part of the body and Pisces rules that. That is an erogenous zone of Piscean energy, but especially of Lilith and Pisces. So it could be like that you do something where only your feet are being shown or something about your feet are getting your attention or getting the attention of others. Because the first house is how people are seeing you. That could also go for the 10th house, like creating a career out of like foot modeling or something like that. But let me not jump ahead. <laughs> the second house with Lilith and Pisces could really be about, um, truly, this could be pornography energy because um, there's other areas that can also manifest that. But this is where you are making your money. Then we're dealing with role playing. Um, so this could be film. It could be like getting money through filming which could be pornography because that's our sexual energy and it could also be like with soft porn it could also be like a very um provocative role that you play like as an actor um in the second house but this is the area that has to do with finding your worth and your value and losing the line of demarcation when it comes to the reality of how you're going to make that money. So maybe you have always wanted to do something a little bit more provocative when it comes to making money. Maybe you feel um, that you need to do it because you're in a situation where you might be experiencing loss with money and need to take extreme measures. This could also be that. Um, so it also could be just the people that you work for, they're triggering you. So maybe you get like a check that is less than others at your job and that starts to play a role in how your Lilith is triggered and ignited. The third house, similar to Mercury, this could be a medium of putting yourself and putting the darker side of you onto social media, creating an image about you, marketing an image about you that is very much so more about the darker side of you. Um, also telling a story, like a, a short story about yourself that could um, be televised, that could, you know, showcase in like a, a radio or like a broadcast or a podcast, like situation where you're sharing maybe trauma, mental illness situation or overcoming abuse. These could be things that happen in the third house. You might be um, triggered by the roles played in the third house. So like the neighbors, like maybe your neighbor is a little different and, or, um, you know, is provoking you to be different yourself, right? It could also be like your extended family because the third house is like siblings and cousins. So it could also be that, like maybe you have <clears throat> a falling out with a sibling or a sibling themselves is under duress, under the energy of Lilith and Pisces, and then you are triggered to it as well, or you are the healer healing energy of it so you still find yourself in hospitals whether you're the one doing it or the sibling or the cousin is in the situations St stuff like that um in the fourth house this is where we are dealing with the the emptiness or the void of a true home um of feeling like you have a shelter and a place to live in and um this could also manifest as like um like floods in the home or dealing with some sort of crack in the foundation of the home that is water related. Um, this could also be about um, the role. You, you could be provoked by your mother or your parents at this time or your grandparents or provoked by like just your ancestry in general. Um, maybe feeling like you don't belong to your ancestry, you know, or feeling like an outcast because you're a little bit um, different than what your you know bloodline wants you to be uh 
this could be highly spiritual as well because it's a water house. So this could also be where you are truly coming into your own about your role in being a uh, a blood expression of your bloodline, right? like a genetic expression of your bloodline. I think that's how I would like to say it. In the fifth house, the Lilith and Pisces energy is truly able to operate almost like Chiron in the fifth house. And <clears throat> this could be um, wanting to, having a lot of insecurities with your children, wanting to escape your children. <laughs> and this could bring about um, situations that is chaotic in that in that realm. It could also operate in, in uh, having a lot of dark affairs right clandestine affairs because it's a house of dating and romance um you could put and romanticize the fact that you have are playing different people and having different partners um one of the best outcomes of this house would be to really own your artistry but you could become almost like a drug dealer to your art like people are addicted to your art that could also be it but if you are you know if you're channeling it properly, it's definitely going to be a way in which you can spiritually connect to your children in a way that is different. Um, and you could also be like, um, you could also be somebody who, even though you are in a lot of romantic situations, like you're healing the, the, the sex that you choose to have these romances with right so maybe there's like a subconscious community about like let's say you date women and there's something about these particular women that you date that all have like a similar thread and you actually are be you know especially if you are self-aware and and tackling your illusions you could actually be the one that heals like this thread that continues to happen with these in these women that you date so maybe they all like have a fear of something like you know have a fear of being uh, raped and or they all have had some sort of situation where they have been under some sort of abuse in their life and then you're dating them and then you're able to actually heal them on that kind of level even though it's it's kind of abundant in the dating even though you may not have commitments to them further than the date itself but there could be something there that that's how Lilith is harnessed and that's one example of how Lilith can be harnessed in the sixth house this is where you could completely um disregard your health you could feel like your body has um abandoned you <laughs> you could also deal with concentration issues um you could also deal with some depression and mental instability as well in the sixth house you could also tend to want to routinely indulge in um abusive drugs drug abuse so this is a chance for you to channel your illusions about romanticizing all of those things and come back to health in a proper way and this also would be a great um house that instructs like you losing weight through dancing or um you know learning kundalini um yoga or something like that that brings out the sexual energy through the body so that you're not escaping the body through the mind and learning how to tap into your body learning when your body speaks to you quote unquote through um, maybe like a painful trigger in the stomach or like a weird feeling in the shoulders and being able to almost be psychically in tuned with your body so a lot of the times we are psych psychically in tuned with other people but one of the highest ways that you can exalt Lilith and Pisces is to come back and bring the spiritual realm into the body and so it's like you you tap into your higher self and then tap it into the body because the body especially in the sixth house can be frail it could be especially with Lilith and Pisces transiting the sixth house can start to feel frail can start to feel neglected like you are outcasting and rejecting your body so bringing the spirit spirit down back into the body 
right? And saying, okay, we are here for a, a, a mere glimpse in time. I will always be my spirit. I will always be connected to the stars. I will always have the chance for an eternity to be out of my body. But for this reality right now, I need to experience my body again. And that could be a, an exalted version of or example of love and Pisces in the sixth house. I said this was going to be short, but geez. <laughs> okay, so Lilith in Pisces in the seventh house. This is, so Lilith in the seventh house, and I'm very familiar with this one because this is, this is my placement, I believe. I think I'm cuspy, sixth and seventh house. Uh, but I'm not Lilith in Pisces natally. But one thing that I know for sure that happens with Lilith in Pisces is that in the seventh house is that you are dealing with the role of being conventional in your marriage right because the seventh house is marriage right so this could be a time where you have just gotten married you've been married or you are being proposed to right or you are the one proposing and you might be exalting the idea of marriage or you might be completely illusioned disillusioned by marriage in the positive or negative sense so in the positive sense you could be disillusioned that marriage is the end all of all things and who I marry is going to be it for me and completely lose the reality that it, it's a human that you're marrying that you guys are going to have ups and downs there could be several times in your marriage that you experience divorce or the threat of divorce you know you don't want to deal with the reality of it the other thing is that you could be completely fearful of marriage, that you could see it as a trap, a trap of spirit, soul, mind, and body, and not really want to take partake in it at all, or be impressionable to go forth into the marriage because of the subconscious agreement that marriage is necessary when you you know, our certain age or when you have a baby or, or whatever. And so you are impressionable in, in that. And now you are rejecting your role as being a marriage partner. This could um, work out in highly exalted ways in which you and your partner are spiritually combined, that you can help each other heal from um, addiction. You could help each other heal through mental instability. Um, and you and your partner could actually feed each other's fantasies as long as you channel it in a way in which you keep the fantasies contained, right? So amongst you two, but like there's a story about like this partnership. I don't know who it is. I don't know the names, but I just heard the story about this couple in Florida who was like drugging people, uh, drugging women and bringing them back to their house. This to me could be an example of a Lilith and Pisces in the seventh house gone wrong <laughs> in which maybe you do explore fantasies, but if you take it too far, it can become chaotic and it can become criminal even. So um, that would be how I would um, interpret that Lilith and Pisces in the seventh house. In the eighth house, we are looking at this is pure sexuality and this is where you hide your secrets. So this could definitely be, like the 12th house, a place where you take out your lack of sexual um, experiences, like not having the fulfillment of those fantasies and begin to, you know, just indulge, overindulge in them. But it, the energy about it is that it's, it's secretive, that you are the one that's holding the secret. And you might be provoked by um, people who are in like sexual uh, careers, you know, like even like a psychic, you know, um, a, a psychic hotline was what I was thinking, but that's not a sexual career. I mean, it could be, but like a sex, like phone line could be something that happens like where you're like the one who's operating or the one who's calling. Um, but it could also be that certain roles are kind of provocative to you like a healer or a um well a healer could actually be the ninth house but like a psychic or a tarot artist like you might be um fantasizing about those roles or those kinds of people are 
provocative to you. They're, they stir your uh, need for the different and um, the hidden. And you can also go just really, really deep here. Um, you could tap into the true dark uh, subconsciousness of all the options that are out there when it comes to sexual prowess and indulgences, you know, like all the categories that exist <laughs> on like a porn site, you could want to uh, tap into those or explore those. You may not actually use them, but you might be more explorative because the eighth house is also like an investigative place, you know? Okay, so the ninth house is where you could fetish over a guru. Um, definitely, you could, like, a guru, a guru could be a symbol of a fetish to you, and that could be everything from also a tarot healer, a psychic healer, um, or a preacher, you know? Or you could be the guru that is using sexual fetishes to entice people. And um, you could be the... Um, person that brings wisdom about role playing and fantasy so you could be like a teacher of like a, an sm class or something like that um maybe maybe that's more scorpio but like a teacher of like a cosplay class or something like that um the ninth house is also exploration the eighth house is investigation so it goes deep into the taboo realms right, of sexual um, fetishes, the ninth house goes out. So this is definitely another place like the fifth house and the seventh house. The ninth house could go out into the world looking to explore different partners, right? Um, this might be on the cultural level too. So it might be really like exploring like exotic and foreign like people, or um, trying out like some, you know, fetish, bringing a fetish to somebody from a different um, like country as you or something like that. The 10th house would be where Lilith and Pisces can, um, like I said, choose like a career of like pornography in which they are using their reputation to um, explore fantasy role and playing. That's one example of it in the 10th house. The 10th house can also be where we also deal with our um, our reality and consequences because it's a Saturnian house. So Lilith and Pisces wants to fly into the chaotic world of illusions and delusions. And then the 10th house being the authoritative figure, you could be very much so that and be um, tackling your own illusions on how much authority you actually have, or thinking that you can really um, control people when you either do or you don't, right? Because it, it can go both ways. You can absolutely have the ability to control people and abuse it. Um, you could be somebody that people come to for like abuse, you know, like on some like real R. Kelly shit. You could also be somebody that is standing for um standing for the role as king like you want to be on top but you also and you want to be served but you also are in this place in which you want to lead a kingdom that is um for reformation and healing right um this could also be a place where we like sleep to get to the top, where we are a fantasy figure of people's sexual imaginations because, um, and this could be also be said about the first house, um, the first and the 10th house and the 12th house, but I really feel like the first and 10th house could be the strongest in that case of being put on a pedestal. People could put your authority on a pedestal. They might want to really see you as the authority. You might have um, the responsibility of finishing what was started. Like maybe somebody before you came in and completely wrecked like a business and now you're coming in as the one who is repairing what somebody started. So finishing, finishing like tying the loose ends in the 
arena of career and business. So these are all examples just to get you stirring. Um, in the 11th house, Loth and Pisces can truly be um, tapped into, and uh, sorry, for the 10th house, the provocative roles could be your boss or like the clients that you work with. Same thing for the 6th house. Um, for the 11th house, Loth and Pisces is actually um, tapping, very prone to tapping into impressionism truly and prone to it because this is an area of communities and you could find yourself in organizations that are kind of dark you could find yourself in organizations that that fill the spectrum everything from satanic cults to um angel healers <laughs> you could find um you know a lot of sex groups could actually be here where you're tapping into or come across a sex group, you know, um, that wants to bring you in, you know, because the 11th house is groups. And then Lilith is dark sexual liberation. And Pisces is impressionability, the ability to be, um, you know, to feel like you are everything. So why not? Um, this could be a... A place also where you actually tap into, um, you know, like those houses where like people like sit and smoke all day or, you know, just do drugs all day. This could also be one of those situations. That could also be for the fourth house if I think about it. Um, but these situations where you're tapped into a group and you are romanticizing your ability to... Um, you know, partake in drug use. The 10th house could actually also be where you make a career out of um, dealing drugs with Lilith and Pisces. At least for this year, you might take it on. Um, for the 12th house, this is where we are experiencing the epitome of escapism and dealing with... Um, really wanting to be in the bed all the time, which could be on your own, right? Which could be leading to like a lot of masturbation. This could also be where you have a lot of different partners, um, where you also are interested in exotic foreign partners. Um, this could be a place where you uh, want to do a lot of film, um, you know, like film work, and you could actually really use that in your creativity to do film work. Um, the 12th house could be where we have, you are dealing with a cheater or becoming a cheater yourself. And cheaters are definitely with Lilith energy, I'm speaking about sexual cheating, but you could also cheat on a test. You could also cheat in some other kind of situation, right? You could try to take a short cut to something here. Um, but definitely in the idea of an extra matter, marital affair is prone in the 12th house. These are on the lower levels of Lilith. And the reason, right, because there's definitely different aspects in astrology to show you cheaters. But the reason would be with Lilith and Pisces is the need to flee reality and to come into an escapist fantasy um, situation, something that you've always wanted to do. And it, it's there and it's provided for you. Um, this could be a, you keeping secrets from other people, whether it's big or small. This could be a need for voyeurism. So like really wanting to um, film other people in their, you know, more provocative attire. It could be wanting to spy in on people as well. And so these could be one one way that the sexual lustful experiences are being taken out in the 12th house it could be something that you operate very well with somebody that you love trust and adore in the 12th house it does not always have to be something where it brings pain to other people but the pain is often triggered in the 12th house and this is why you tend to go there right so you can feel pain and then want to have sex with you know, somebody that takes you away from this earth and you don't even see them as a person. You just see them as like a, a fantasy figure. They're not real, 
um, you also could be prone to having secrets be held from you in the 12th house you could also be prone to overindulgence of addiction strongly in the 12th house almost to the point where you are in rehab in the 12th house with the in Pisces in the 12th house the 12th house is where we call our undoing and the only way to operate with Lilith and Pisces in my opinion in the 12th house is to use your creativity if you use your creativity to indulge in the Piscean themes, then you are going to be um, beyond your body, but in your body, right? You won't get lost in your mind like the sixth house. The sixth house, you're lost in your mind and the body's frail. In the twelfth house, you're lost in your mind and your life is becoming frail. Your, your partners, everything from partners to families to everything, everything is becoming frail. Because what's beyond you is just so much more enticing. So the 12th house is a chance for you to go beyond yourself through your art and creativity. It is one of the most creative parts of the astrology, astrological zodiac. And, and on top of that, it is where your hidden talents are. So there's something that you could truly like, you know, you could become like the next Michael Jackson with that Loth and Pisces, if you channel your pain properly, that's what it is, right? If it was Chiron, if it was another planet, it would be a different channeling. But Lilith here, it's about channeling your rejection, channeling your pain through your artistic flair, right? Channeling your pain through your healing modality or divination, you know? So instead of using the tarot to provoke somebody to go out and cheat on their partner you use the tarot to help somebody to see the the change in their life right or instead of using psychic abilities because you're probably going to experience true psychic experiences during this time instead of using it to hinder yourself or somebody else use it as a means to see where there are you know manipulators where there are um, major life shifts that you can help guide people through. So you are either a guide or you are the the drug user and abuser. Like the I'm sorry, drug dealer and abuser in this area. So the twelfth house is probably the strongest with Lilith and Pisces because it's the natural home of Pisces. And I could go on forever. But if you have any questions, please just ask me in the comments below about anything that I've said in this live. And I will answer them because probably other people have similar questions. And I want to make sure that, at least from my per perspective, that everything, all the, all the loose ends are tied. <laughs> so thank you so much for tuning in to my live. I really am passionate about Lilith right now on my journey and really learning how to tap into this feminine dark feminine energy and use it for for not good but for my own goals right use it in a way that could help uplift humanity there are some schools of thought that believe that you should completely avoid your Lilith but here's my thing Anything about yourself that you reject or judge as being something that should never get, you can never give your attention to, it will only get bigger and the need will get stronger. And there's no other placement that you could try to avoid more and get more of a stronger reaction than Lilith. So it's not about putting all your focus in this area because where what you focus on grows. But giving your attention to that pain, giving your attention to the feeling of rejection and feeling like an outcast. It might not be a very fun journey at the moment, but, you know, spending a day with yourself, spending a day with that pain, looking at all of the dark feelings that you harbor, it gives your body the acceptance that it's looking for. And that is when we truly become whole when we're able to see all of the parts of us. And this is kind of where I'm at right now. I like to see myself as a positive energy, um, sunny kind of person, but I really feel like it's important for me to understand 
the depths of me that feel really rejected and when I'm able to do that I, I feel more of a whole person I feel like I can come back up to the light after learning how to see in the dark and really be able to commit to you know my goals and visions so this is the eye of Karina and thank you for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video peace and love